One of the most common faith questions is how do you study the Bible? Let's break it down into five steps, five elements, very practical, and we'll walk through this together. Five things that you need, and the first thing is that you need a Bible, an actual Bible. Sure, it's on your phone and that's good, but I also encourage you to have a hard copy of the Bible. Now you're gonna choose a translation. There's many good translations. A couple of very popular translations are the NIV, New International Version, and also ESV, English Standard Version. And I encourage you to get a study Bible or a life application Bible. Again, that's a study Bible or a life application Bible. You can find them online. They're less than $50. And the reason I like that version is because it has some features. And those features include notes below the verses that unpack the meaning, the history, the context. It's kind of like having a commentary that gives you insights so you can understand more of what you're reading. And then in addition to that, there's lots of tools. There are maps and charts and timelines. There's also an index where there's topics, specific words that you can look up, and even cross-references that takes you from one passage to another passage. These are all helps that, again, as you're studying God's Word, all of these really make a difference. Choose a Bible, buy one online, NIV, ESV, study Bible or life application Bible. You'll be so glad that you have one. It's a great investment. When you're studying the Bible, you need a Bible and you also need a prayer. A prayer is simply communicating with God. This is more about a relationship than it is about just acquiring knowledge. And the Bible is how God communicates to you. And then in prayer, you communicate to God. It's a listening and speaking. In God's Word, it can be a little intimidating. There's 66 books. And spiritually, we need God to open our eyes and also give us understanding. He's the author of the Bible, he knows the Bible, and he will help teach us. So seek God with a simple prayer. It's important to come to God with a teachable heart, and you express that through prayer. And the Bible is living and active, it's transformative. So when you come with an open heart seeking God, God will communicate, God will bring his word powerfully into your life. The prayer can be as simple as, God, thank you for the Bible. I wanna grow in my faith. I wanna know you better, God. Please, God, teach me. And whatever it says, God, I really want to do it. I want to live it out for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a prayer like that, when you open up the Bible, it makes a huge difference. Let's draw close to God as we study his word. And the third element is a plan. A plan can include a time of day and a place where you read the Bible. For me personally, I like to jump in as soon as I wake up in the morning before I get busy and sidetracked but what time of the day and place is best for you. Then also a reading plan, and you decide how quickly you want to read through the Bible. How much of the content do you want each day? People often ask, what book should I start with? And I encourage you to check out the Gospel of John. Read one chapter a day, read through the entire Gospel of John. And then you can decide if you want to move on to the next book or if you want to do that again with the Gospel of John, but one chapter a day, one book at a time. For those of you who are ready for more, I like to read through the entire Bible in a year. And you can find that online. There's an app and you can choose to read through the entire Bible in a year, which basically breaks down to about three chapters a day. It's about five to 10 minutes of reading a day, which isn't that much. So the whole Bible in a year, that's powerful. Your mind's gonna be filled with so many good things. Your soul will be fed. And reading the Bible is about nurturing your faith, drawing close to God. And God's word, when you really make it a habit, and you create space in your life for that habit, you're also creating more space in your life for God. When you're reading the Bible, it's important to have a focus. And you can bring questions to the text. Here's four questions. Whenever you read the Bible, these apply. The first one is, who is God? The second, what is God doing? The third, who are you? And the fourth, what are you gonna do related to this passage? Those four questions are so helpful as you dive into God's word. John 3.16 is a well-known Bible verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So who is God? God is full of love. He's the one who brings salvation. What is he doing? He's pursuing you through Jesus to have a relationship. Who are you? You're, need, you're someone who needs God and needs his love every moment and for eternity. And then what are you gonna do based on that verse? Believe in Jesus, receive his love, walk with him. 
See, every passage, whether it's a chapter or a verse, come back to those four questions. Make those your focus. It's a great way to study God's Word and apply it to your life. Who is God? What is God doing? Who are you? And what are you going to do now that you've read this passage? And then the last element is a group. Yes, study the Bible alone, but it's rich when you also have a group of people to study the Bible with. For my wife Lori and I, in our home, we've always had a life group, and that's a group of people that gather together weekly, not only study God's Word, but also to live it out together. How do we serve? How do we encourage? How do we reach out? This book, the Bible, it's living and active, and when the Bible starts to get inside of you, not only do you start to own it, but then it works through you and uh, changes your life in powerful ways. It's the sweetest when there's a community together that's committed to not only studying the Bible, but also applying it. So invite some people to join you. Get in a group together, learn from each other. Different people have different perspectives and insights and all of this drawing close to Jesus. And I wanna give you a challenge as a wrap up. Buy a Bible. Remember we started by saying that you need a Bible, a study Bible, a life application Bible? Well, go ahead and buy one online and give it to someone else. As you gather as a group, Maybe you want to provide that for the entire group, but choose someone. Give them the gift of a Bible, and it'll bless them for the rest of their lives. God is living. God is powerful. God communicates. And when we're in His Word, we hear His voice. We draw near to Him. There's satisfaction, contentment, fulfillment that comes in a relationship with God through His Word.